This is a video demo showing how to apply joint mobilization technique at the radiocarpal joint. The demo is on right wrist. The radiocarpal joint is an ellipsoid joint where flexion, extension, radial and ulnar deviation of wrist occur. The convex carpal bones roll and glide on the concave radius. Distraction of the radiocarpal joint is helpful to increase overall range of motion of the joint. Grasp the distal radius and ulna to stabilize the proximal part of joint. Grasp the most proximal part of hand where the carpal bones are. Make sure to put each side of your index fingers as close as possible almost overlapping. And distract the joint. To increase the last few degrees of pronation, you can mobilize the triquetrum on the articular disc in the ulnar side of wrist. If your patient has TFCC injury, this technique is contraindicated. Hold the distal radius and nearby carpals in one hand. Put your index finger on the triquetrum, but actually on the pisiform which is located anterior to triquetrum. And the thumb on the same side of mobilizing hand will stabilize the head of ulna. Mobilize the triquetrum posteriorly by pressing the pisiform posteriorly. The patient may feel discomfort if you compress the ulnar nerve that is passing by the pisiform in the Guyans tunnel. Please discontinue if so. To increase flexion or extension of wrist, you can perform dorsal or palmar glide of carpals on radius respectively. Grasp the distal end of radius and ulna in one hand and the proximal row of carpals in another hand. Mobilize the carpals dorsally for flexion. Palmar glide for extension. Radial or ulnar glide needs to be applied to increase the deviation of either side. The position of your patient is same, just you mobilize into ulnar or radial side of wrist to achieve the goal. Grasp the distal ends of radius and ulna and the proximal row of carpals in each hand. Mobilize the carpals radially to increase ulnar deviation, ulnarly to increase radial deviation. When your patient has limited glide in mid-carpal joint, it restricts the full extension of wrist. Mobilizing the distal row of carpals on the proximal row of carpals can help the motion. The patient's elbow is resting on the table. The thenar eminence of one hand contact the distal row of carpals dorsally. The thenar eminence of the other hand contact the proximal row of carpals. You can interlace your fingers to have a firm grip. Squeeze two hands to glide the distal row of carpals palmarly on the proximal row of carpals. Precise palpation needs to perform the technique effectively. This is all. Thank you for watching.